Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be talking about WinRing Zero. What is it? Why is this driver so persistent? Why are so many gamers getting messages from Windows Defender over the last few months about it? Is it malware? What exactly does it do? And why is it a problem? So I saw uh, Gamers Nexus made a video on this, and I thought I would also add some of my own thoughts, because I've been following this for a while, and I do actually have an example of a real-world malware attack where this vulnerable driver was used, which I'm, I am going to show you in just a second. So recently, a lot of people have been learning about this because they've been getting an error message from Windows Defender saying that it's malware. A while before that, people were getting error messages from Riot Vanguard as well which is an, a kernel anti-cheat that blocks insecure kernel drivers. Not purely because of the good of their heart, mind you, but because it is possible to exploit these drivers to bypass kernel anti-cheat. But there are much worse things that can be done. Uh, essentially, what WinRing Zero does is it is an unauthenticated driver that provides an open interface to write system memory. What this means essentially is you can you can access any hardware or memory on the whole computer through WinRing Zero. Now you may be wondering, okay, so why do a bunch of RGB and fan control drivers come with this software then if it's so obviously problematic? Why do some games ship it? Recently, Marvel Rivals shipped it, and many people got detections for that, and it was suspiciously named PowerShell.sys, not even its normal name, which made many people panic and think that they'd somehow gotten a virus or that the game itself was a virus. So the reason why this driver is in use for so many different things is because there is no universal user mode library for fan or RGB control that's actually handled by something called an SM bus, or sometimes there are a few other buses that control this. To communicate with this and other hardware, you need a driver. So what WinRing Zero does is it provides an interface that enables open access to hardware through Windows. You can see why this would be useful, and the core reason why these developers don't just write a driver themselves it's not necessarily because they're lazy. For individuals who make open source tools, it's quite a complicated process to get a driver that will run on modern versions of Windows, because you have to get an extended validation certificate, which costs about $1,000, and then you have to send the driver to Microsoft, who then have to sign it themselves back. It's also worth noting that you either need to be a company or a registered sole proprietor if you want such a certificate. You can't just buy one as an individual. As a result, compared to all of that work, using WinRing Zero, which comes pre-signed, seems like a great idea. And until recently, many companies were doing it. In March, Windows Defender decided to add WinRing Zero as a hack tool. Now, it's worth noting, a hack tool is not a virus, per se. A hack tool is any tool, and it could be something that the user might intentionally use uh, if the user was wanting to hack someone, or it could be something that is known to have malicious uses. So hacking software, anything, anything like that, that could be either used for legitimate purposes or illegitimate purposes. When you have this driver installed, any user, even without admin, is essentially able to get every permission. Uh, this has been in fan control, open RGB, Libra hardware monitor. This is actually how it ended up uh, in Marvel Rivals, is their anti-cheat, for some reason, despite already being kernel level, was secondarily using Libra hardware monitor. Capframe X, MSI Afterburner, uh, yeah, all of these different tools, and EVGA Precision X, although after they were informed of the insecurity a few years ago, they did swap it out, luckily. So why is this such a big deal? Well, I actually tested a sample that does this a few months ago. And here is roughly the disassembly uh, that corresponds to loading the malicious driver. And what it ultimately does is then it's able to gain a higher level of privilege, becoming a full kernel rather than just having admin privileges. It's now uh, a kernel. Mo it's now kernel mode, and it uses that for protecting the file against removal. It makes uh, getting rid of it much harder. This isn't the only case. This is especially common in enterprise attacks, or, or at least it was before this driver became 
generally removed on site by enterprise grade security solutions because if you have access to a vulnerable kernel driver, it's game over. You can just kill the EDR or hide your program from it perfectly and completely take over. This driver has no access control to speak of and lets any user write any portion of system memory, whether it be kernel memory or any application's memory. Now, why is this dangerous? Well, with a relatively simple exploit, and we can find there's plenty of, uh, it's already got a hit on the national vulnerability database, Wimring 0.sys and Wimring 0.sys 64-bit edition allow local users, including low integrity processes, to read and write to arbitrary memory locations. This allows any user to gain access to system privileges. Yup, you can do that. You can actually do something even worse as well. You can actually simply write to the right piece of memory to enable test signing mode, which then means you can load any unsigned kernel mode driver you want. This is also quite common in cheating communities, although other drivers are also frequently used, including a vulnerable Intel one that forms the basis of KD Mapper. In this case, they would use this to load an un signed cheat driver that then is intended to hide or defeat a kernel mode anti-cheat. Now there is a way to mitigate some of this. If you go into security, and we'll do this, we go to device security and core isolation, you can, and I'm not going to do this because it's a VM, so this would actually this would just create a massive performance nightmare, but you can turn a feature called memory integrity on and you absolutely want this, which will prevent drivers like WinRing Zero and enables Microsoft to continually block newly found to be vulnerable drivers, because there are dozens of these. There's a Dell driver, there was a Ryzen Master driver, and the notorious Intel driver all had this uh, functionality. So by enabling this and this, uh, memory integrity uses the hypervisor so that a malicious driver isn't able to overwrite the kernel portion. That prevents some of the worst attacks possible here. Now, what unfortunately there isn't a solution for is a safe way for hobbyists and like non-commercial developers to make this kind of utility that requires a kernel driver. Because the only proper way to do it is to get an EV certificate, so sign their own driver properly, as EVGA Precision X did after this security researcher reached out to them about a local privilege escalation vulnerability, uh, they fixed it. And what they ultimately did was they replaced that driver with their own driver that had access controls so that only EVGA Precision X would be able to use it rather than simply providing memory access to any unauthenticated program. Microsoft also did seemingly partially walk it back. Uh, and yes, any reasonable developer would say, of course it is dangerous. No, there is no scenario. Like, in theory, they could say, well, what if we just only allow trusted apps to run Wing Ring Zero? Well, the problem with that is if any of those trusted apps are installed, given it has no authentication, uh, that is a non-starter. It would require Microsoft writing the access controls for them, at which point they could simply design a better interface. And then Signal RGB wrote their own driver, which is the correct alternative. Yeah, and the correct thing to do is to write, uh, as uh, HWMFU's uh, person points out, while Microsoft doesn't seem to want to comment on this, the, the correct thing to do here is not to export kernel level permissions to user mode. There is no safe way of doing that. That is common sense. If there was a safe way of doing that, then we would not need ring zero protection. The only safe solution here is to build a kernel driver for the application that does only exactly what the application needs and doesn't have a single additional permission. That, that's how any secure system should be designed. You take only the permissions you need and lock them down as much as possible, not give yourself absolutely everything for the same reason why you don't run web browsers as administrator these days. So then, that is going to be all for this video. Hopefully this clarifies this mess. Don't run random kernel drivers with vulnerabilities. If someone says this is a false positive, I would assume they don't know what they're talking about. 
uh, it's just not worth the risk, completely eliminates your security. So that's going to be all from me for now. Bye.